Welcome, everybody. I hope, uh, I hope everybody's Thanksgiving was as great as mine. Uh, it's a great time of the year. Uh, Christmas coming up. Uh, it's just such a blessing to see you all here this Sunday. Um, today is Psalm 113. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is not exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust, and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and with princes of their people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord. Lord, we thank you for bringing us all here on this Sunday to be together and to worship your name, Lord. We pray for a safe holiday season for everybody. We pray for... We pray for a revival, Lord. We pray for America. We pray for Armenia. We pray for everybody who's traveling this weekend and couldn't be here. May their journey be safe and their, their experience be fulfilling, Lord. We, uh, we pray for, most of all, and again, we pray for revival in our country. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
It's really low, right? You know what that means? That you mean you just got the same love. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the beauty of the situation we're in. The man that can do something about it is actually not here. So we're all going to just sing out loud. Hopefully you know the song. Let's sing.
Our pastor is watching this from wherever he is. He's not here today, but in case he is, I don't know how he does this. But he like does that and then does this and then does this again for the Armenian service. So that's a crazy task. And every time I have, I've been asked to do this, it, it, um, it makes me very nervous because your brain is working like 4,000 different ways. We have to set up the sound, we have to practice for that, make sure the songs are good and they come in. And while I'm singing there, I'm thinking how am I going to do this? Um, so bear with me. Um, if it's a little bit of uh, nervous feeling this morning, um, let's pray before we start. We didn't pray up there, so let's pray before we start. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you, God, this morning. We praise you, God, because you are the God of this universe. You are the God that is alive. You are a God that's active, and you are a God that's a part of each and every one of our lives. We praise you, God, for bringing us here together in your name. We praise you, God, for this church. We praise you for the church family. We praise you for the ability to become a church to be one in your name. We praise you, God, because you are good. We praise you, God, because you are great. We praise you, we praise you God, because you are all merciful and loving. We praise you, God, because you are God. Be with us this morning. Help us to hear your word. Help it to uh, move us and make us more and more in your will, Lord, as a church and as individuals. In your son's name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. This last Thursday was obviously Thanksgiving, so when I was asked to, to speak this weekend, um, obviously it's going to have something to do with uh, Thanksgiving. This uh, last Thanksgiving was an interesting one because I, um, I didn't actually get to celebrate Thanksgiving the traditional way, um, in that my family met somewhere, but my daughter wasn't feeling well, so my daughter and I ended up staying home while the family was out wherever everybody was meeting and it was kind of strange because like um, of all the holidays I kind of like Thanksgiving the most because it's just it's kind of the most Armenian holiday of them all because there's nothing to it it's just coming together and eating so there's no pressure there's no gifts there's nothing I have to get from my wife or anything it's just let's just eat and so I usually like Thanksgiving and I actually as much as I like Christmas time and all that it's, it's one of the worst and uh uh, worst times for me in terms of peace uh, because it's uh, it's very busy. It's very chaotic um, Being a part of the church. It's incredible what the amount of things that we have to do during Christmas time So I don't actually feel like I enjoy Christmas I look through I look forward to Thanksgiving because it's almost like the calm holiday before the storm of everything that's happening between uh, Thanksgiving and um, the New Year, coupled with the Christmas stuff with church, there's also my son's birthday like three days before that. So, you know, he didn't, he's, he's you know, right smack dab in the busy season. Um, that doesn't make it easy. And then there's also like obviously the gift section and the decorations and all this stuff. So I don't actually enjoy Christmas time. So Thanksgiving for me is actually very, very important because I get to have that moment. But this year, um, it was just me and my daughter. My daughter actually, I was like, okay, maybe we'll go to like Coco's or something and have like a Thanksgiving meal together. You know, she was fine enough that we could go out and have a meal. And so I was like, you know what, um, I'm going to do a couple things when I come back in to the house. I was outside, you know, I'll tell my daughter, let's go. And then so I went inside and I'm like, where is she at? I open her door in her room and she's just passed out sleeping. So my, it was like six o'clock, my daughter's sleeping and I don't know what else to do. So I just went to the garage and I went on the treadmill for an hour. And then I came back, I showered and then she was up. I'm like, hey, are you hungry? She's like, not really. So then we were just sitting there in the living room doing nothing. And so uh, we turned on Sister Act and we watched Sister Act. And uh, Whoopi Goldberg was kind of cool back in the day. And so it was funny. But anyway, we watched Sister Act. I introduced her to Sister Act. Have you guys not seen Sister Act? Yes. No? Okay. Yes. He's, this side hasn't seen Sister Act. You should see Sister Act. Um, so Sister Act's a good movie. But we, anyway, we, we, we sat and we watched Sister Act. And, and there was a moment where it's like, you know, I'm not sitting there having like the turkey and the whatever, cranberry sauce is my favorite. I'm not doing all that stuff. Um, but I'm sitting here with my daughter and we're enjoying a movie together. And I was actually pretty thankful for that. It was kind of cool. And there was a moment where it's like, sometimes what you're in, the moment that you're in or the, the situation that you're put in, how do we view it? How do we look at that situation? And for a moment there, I said, you know, I could have been with all the, the hoopla, the family, and the eating, and the drinking, and all that. But today, I just sat in quiet, and we just watched the movie together. And I haven't actually done that with my daughter in a really, really long time. Um, I haven't done that in general. I don't really watch anything. So it was really cool for me to slow down and just spend some time with her. 
And so it got me into this weird situation where, yeah, it's Thanksgiving, but I'm thankful for this moment right here that we have. And isn't that so much of what Thanksgiving is about? In First, in first Thessalonians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul gives his final instructions to the church. Um, uh, and there's a couple things that he says in there that I find very interesting that I want to discuss or talk about today. Um, I guess we can all stand and read together. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 18. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. May God bless the reading of his word. May be seated. Um, another interesting thing about Thanksgiving is that we come together to give thanks, and in one of the most Amazing phenomena in all of uh, American traditions is the tradition of Black, Black Friday. Um, and this idea that we go and we give thanks for everything that we have, and then on Black Friday we like pummel one another for a TV. So it's kind of a funny situation in that you kind of sit down and give thanks for all that you got and get, but wait, I need more. Um, I've done one time, I've gone to Black Friday. I stood in outside of Fry's, rest in peace. We were outside in Fry's. And we, uh, and it was this long line, and then this was the first time ever it happened to be with some of the guys from this church. And we went and stood up outside Black Friday, it was like whatever, two in the morning or whatever it was. It was freezing, and we're all just standing there, and all these guys are already. And then I look out in front of us, and there's all these people, and these there's people in front of us that have mapped out fries. Like they they went to fries like the day before, and they mapped out the aisles. And they had these little maps, like these little treasure maps in their hands. And I said, these people are crazy. I'm sorry if any of you guys are like that in here, but I said, these people are nuts, they're crazy. And then I realized really quickly on Black Friday that they only really give you like three real deals. And everything else is just like whatever. You could have just gotten that yesterday, you know? But then they open the doors and everybody's like rushing for the Black Friday stuff. And it was crazy. And then I like ran in there with everybody and then I stopped and I got myself like three USB sticks. And then I walked out. And we walked to Denny's, and I just had some pancakes while they were uh, um, doing Black Friday. But it was interesting to see the Black Friday craziness the day after Thanksgiving. This year, I have to admit, I did um, purchase something on Black Friday. But I do, God bless the apps that are out. I bought it on, through the app. Um, for the first time ever, don't laugh, last, or two weeks ago, I was introduced, I was introduced to the incredible material and feeling of Lululemon, okay? I didn't know this. I always joked around. I thought they were just like yoga pants for women and stuff. And uh, one of my friends that, that I exercise with, he's like, dude, you gotta try Lululemon shorts. And I was like, yeah, no. And then so we went, and there's, a, there's this other company that apparently is trying to like battle Lululemon called Fabletics. Have you heard of Fabletics? And so we went and tried Fabletics, and I was like, this is it, I'm not about to pay 80 bucks for these. And then he was like, well wait, let's go to Lululemon next door. So we went to Lululemon, two guys shopping at Lululemon, don't judge me, okay? Um, but we went to Lululemon, and we're, we need to get matching shorts because we're doing some competition, so we have to get matching. He's like, try these. I wore it, and it was like this moment of like, where has this been all my life? And then I went to go check out, I bought the shorts and the shirt and whatever, and it was like $90 for shorts. And then they had Black Friday sale. So they had $85 shorts for like $35, so I ended up buying four pairs of shorts and pants that I haven't tried, but it's worth it because I know it's gonna feel great and I know what my size is, so I did Black Friday sale and I thank the good Lord for that. In chapter five of First Thessalonians, Paul the Apostle instructs his church, and he says, Brothers, this is what I need you guys to do. Respect those who labor among you and are over you and admonish you. Respect people. Be, be, uh, be respectful to people. And he says, I urge you, brothers, to admonish the idol. Um, to admonish the idol, which is kind of like the unruly, the people that aren't really a part of it, they're not really doing anything, um, or follow correctly, admonish them, okay? Tell them no, tell, to instruct them to be correct in what they're doing. And then he says, uh, encourage the faint-hearted, be, be encouraging to people who are having a hard time, that are going through things. And then finally he says, he says, help the weak, 
people that need you. Help them. And in the end, he says, with, every, with all of it, be patient. Be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and everyone. In the beginning of these instructions, he's telling us to do things. He's telling us to do things. And some of those things that are done sound easy enough, but they're not. To respect their, your, your leaders, to be, to be kind of, um, uh, to, to go towards people that are not living the correct way and tell them what to do, tell them what they're doing is wrong or, or lifting them up in that way, um, that's not easy either. It's something that you gotta do. To, to, to be with the faint-hearted, to, to help them, um, to be patient with them, these are all things that sound easy, but they're not actually that easy. And the only way somebody can actually get to these points, I think, is if they have the second part of what he's instructing people to do. And in the second part, in verse 16, he says something uh, very uh, powerful. He says, rejoice always. Rejoice always. You see, this is a very difficult thing to do, to rejoice always. He didn't say rejoice sometimes. Rejoice when it matters. Rejoice when it helps you. He didn't say rejoice when your team is winning or whatever. Rejoice always. You cannot get to rejoicing always unless you have something. You cannot find yourself rejoicing always unless you have the understanding of God in your life. So rejoice always and right after that, he says, pray without ceasing. In order to be able to rejoice always, you need to have an understanding of God. In order to be able to pray without ceasing, you need to have an actual relationship with God. And this is a prayer that's not like talking, like go to a room every second and pray or whatever. This is constant in communication with God. In all that you do to be in communication with God. How many of us can say that that's what we do in our lives? It's hard enough to rejoice always. This is prayer without ceasing, the constant communication. But finally, he says something that's very interesting. He says in verse 16, I'm sorry, verse 17, pray without ceasing. In verse 18, he says, give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. When we sit around the table and we give thanks, normally we give thanks for like things. Thank you, God, for this food. Thank you, God, for this house over my head. Thank you, God, for this. But this is an interesting situation here. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. Wherever you are in life, wherever God has put you in, give thanks. Why would he say that? Why should I give thanks? Why, should, why shouldn't I be like, God, why am I here? Well, you can. But give thanks for being there. Give thanks in all circumstances. And interestingly, right after that, in verse 18, can we go to verse 18? So that you can read it. Give thanks in all circumstances. The second part of that sentence is interesting. For this is the will of God. You see, if you believe that God is a part of your life, if you believe that God is in, in connection with your life, that God created you, that God put you here on this earth at this time for this purpose, then you have to give thanks because you are here for that reason. Um, I was talking to a client of mine and he told me, um, I was actually telling him how I, I'm kind of scared of the generation that we're in. It's kind of crazy. A lot of things are going wild. It's, it's, it's just like every second I'll get on my phone and if I'm on Twitter or whatever, something crazier is going on. And people have like seemed to have lost their minds. And I'm like, it's just weird. It's tough for me with my children to think about this. You know what he said to me? This is a guy that's going through seminary. He said, you know what? He said, I believe in the providence of God. I believe in the sovereignty of God. And I believe that God, if he decides to put me here on this earth, at this time of history, there's got to be a reason. And I give thanks to him for that. Okay. That kind of shook me to the core. Because rather than be, be, being afraid for my children and all this stuff, there's a moment that said, God has made these kids of mine be born at this time, 
this moment of history with this craziness for a reason. Because God is good. Give thanks for where you are in your life. Now, it's easier for me to preach this than to live it. It scares me to think that as I preach this, I don't know what's going to happen in my life. I don't know what I might wake up to tomorrow morning. Am I in communication with God in that level? The only way I could get to that communication is if I'm able to know that God has put his hand upon my life at all moments. So I rejoice always and I pray without ceasing. Constant communication. Don't go to God right when things are already crumbling. Go to God always without ceasing. This is the will of God. Sometimes you can get lost following instructions. Instructions is not it. The above part of these instructions that we read, it's difficult to do, but you can still do it. I can show respect to people. The second part is the difficult part. Interestingly, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, he, uh, he asked Jesus, hey, how can I get to heaven? And he says, I follow all the Ten Commandments. He listed all the easy commandments that you can do. I give, to the, I give, I tithe, or whatever. And then Jesus said, no, 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 but you need to sell everything and then and, and follow me. That's a different kind of giving. That's the, that's the true communication with God that, we, that he expects. Our human idea of thankfulness is generally on things that are happening. I've seen even re re uh, relationships get stuck in this situation. Um, sometimes when you talk to people um, who maybe are ready to get married, but they choose not to, and you ask them why are they not getting married, and um, their response sometimes is, well, I, I want to get my career in order, I want us to have this much money, I want to have this kind of house, and all this stuff. And then, um, the, the question for that is, that's great, it's good to be prepared, but then what's, what happens when you get married and then you get laid off the next day? What happens when you get married and all of a sudden the economy tanks? Should you just cut the marriage off and wait again? So sometimes we give thanks in moments where it's like almost circumstantial, our relationships are circumstantial. And when things are going well, Things in the relationships are going well. I, I read some stat. It was like, I think oh, upwards of 90% of divorces are because of financial reasons. So when things are tough, when things are tough, our relationships kind of strain, right? Our relationships kind of strain. Well, our relationship with God cannot be that way. Our relationship with God cannot be circumstantial. If God has gotten us to go through something, there's got to be a reason why we're there. We cannot go to God or run away from God every time it's not working out. It's not circumstantial. And we sometimes take that circumstantial approach to Him. We cannot treat our thankfulness to God like that. Interestingly, in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, this is, what he, this is what Paul says. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. We all know that God is in control. We all know that God is real. We don't actually even need the Bible to know that God is real. The Bible says just look up. And you'll know that God is real. We have no excuse. We've heard the word of God. But you know what's interesting here? In verse 21, For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. You see, our appreciation of life is different when you realize God gave it to you. God owes you nothing. God owes me nothing. We are here because he's let us be here. Naked I came, naked I will return. Everything else is a cherry on top. God owes us nothing and how quickly we think God owes us something. 
There's a comedian, I'm not going to mention his name because he's been disgraced for a long time now, um, but he was on a show a few years ago. He said something very interesting. He was talking and he was saying how the people of this generation, how quickly we believe that we're, we're owed something. And he was talking about a, a moment where he's like, I'm on a plane, and the airplane, this was back when it was kind of a new thing, but on an airplane, it, they announced that they have Wi-Fi on this airplane. And you know, he got excited that there's Wi-Fi on this airplane, and then all of a sudden the Wi-Fi doesn't work. And he's like, how quickly I just started cussing and getting upset that the Wi-Fi doesn't work, when only a few minutes ago I didn't even know that there was Wi-Fi on this plane. He's like, but how about you stop and realize that you're on a tube in the sky going hundreds of miles per hour, getting from point A to point B in a couple hours that back in the day would have taken you months to get to. How quickly we believe the world owes us something. And so we treat God the same way. God doesn't owe us anything. God is there. He's shown his glory and his presence to each and every one of our lives. And we need to thank him for every circumstance that we're in. For every moment that we're in, he says, For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 22, claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. When we don't look to God and give thanks we end up creating our own gods that are going to satisfy us here and there. We end up creating our own idols that are going to satisfy us. But you know what? When, the, when push comes to shove, when circumstances come, none of those things are going to get us through it. And an idol can be anything. Anything. Anything that we think is, is better than or more important than God. In Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say again, rejoice. Charles Spurgeon, the theologian, he said, sometimes people act like they're supposed to grumble in the Lord. They're, also, they're supposed to be angry in the Lord all the time. You have every right to grumble in the Lord. And that's part of grace. But the Bible tells you, you should rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Verse 28, uh, Romans 8.28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good. Be thankful in all circumstances. I have a friend of mine who's a pastor, and he has gone through so much in the last like 10 years between him and his wife. In fact, they just recently gave birth to a child that they knew was going to pass away right as it was born. They found out earlier in the pregnancy, but they continued with the pregnancy, and they knew they were only gonna know this child for a few hours, maybe, if that. And it was minutes. And I've talked to them here and there, and I, and I, and I read some of their posts and things like that, and you know, sometimes I look at my house or whatever, and I go, man, I really wish I had a mountaintop mansion or something. Why, God? Um, and then I see some of these things that they're going through and their service to God through it and their approach to God. Their faith is at a level that I am not at. Their faith has been challenged with so much uncomfortable circumstances to see them rejoicing in God and thanking God for even having a few moments with their child. Shame on me for what I complain about. Because they believe that God works for the good of all those who love Him. So we don't just give thanks for that moment. We don't just give thanks because we're sitting around Turkey and all that. We give thanks always because God has his hand in our lives. Philippians 4, 10 to 13. Philippians 4, 13 is an often misquoted verse. 
But I'm going to read it in sort of its context a little bit. Philippians 4, 10 and 13, this one that says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, this is Paul, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and in need. I can do all things who strengthens me. Do you know what's the, the most important thing that he's able to do here? All things who strengthens me? You know, um, what's his name? Steph Curry has this on his shoes. It has nothing to do with shooting a ball. All things to is being able to give thanks to God and be content with where you are, no matter what, knowing that He gives you strength. He is there with you through it all. It has nothing to do with sports. It has to do with your heart, knowing that God and you are together. So as we go through this holiday season, it can get, get really tough. A lot of people get in deep, deep, dark places during the holiday season. It's not a joke. Suicides go up. Depression goes up. Drug use goes up during the holiday season. A lot of people compare themselves to others. There's a lot of people on their Instagrams going through people's lives and going, oh, I wish my family was like that. I wish my husband was like that. My wife was like that. My kids were like that. There's all these, I wish we were at that hotel. I wish we were at that vacation. I wish, there's all sorts of things going on right now with, with during the holiday season. But are we stopping right now and giving thanks because God has put you here on this earth right now for a reason? Are we glorifying him through that by giving thanks? Thankfulness in all circumstances. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, because we are here. We thank you, God, because we know that you are a God that is in control. Help us, Lord, to connect with your will. Help us, Lord, to know that you work for the good of all of us, all of those who love you. Help us, Lord, to know that you will not let go of us. Help us, Lord, to have a, a, a grateful heart to have a content heart, to know that we can do all things through you who strengthens us. Do this the rest of this week and through the holiday season, Lord. Help us to look to you and to nothing else during this season. In your son's awesome and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.
morning. Welcome once again to the Holy Trinity at Newman Church. Thank you, Brother George, for that sermon. Today is the first Sunday of the Advent season or Christmas season, so it's time to start breaking out all the Christmas attire and help get you in the mood. Uh, we have started back up the Bible studies and the weekly meetings that I took a break off last week. They're all listed in the bulletin here, so if you can pick one of these up, and all the details are in here, and you can join several of them to even through Zoom. Also, to help get, get you in the Christmas spirit, uh, starting next Sunday, being the first Sunday of the month, we will have communion, so please come prepared with your hearts and minds ready. In two weeks, on December 11th, the Sunday school children will be here in, during the service to present their, what they learned through music and through verse. On December the 24th, Christmas Eve, we will have a service here, but please note that it doesn't start till 11 o'clock in the evening. So if you'd like to join us after your family get together, please stop that by. Uh, camp Arab, is, the winter camp is coming up in January. The dates are listed in the the bulletin. The weekends are filling up quickly, so if parents, if you want your kids to go, go to the camp website, sign them up. If you have any more questions, there should be answers on the camp website as well. You can see behind me there's a bunch of poinsettias and we are actively soliciting donations from the cost of those to subsidize them. The cost is eight dollars per poinsettia. Please see as RP. We really, really need volunteers, especially help with the Sunday school. So parents, if you'd like your children to do well and to learn things in Sunday school, please uh, let Reverend R know. If you're unsure about whether or not you feel qualified to help, we have a good a curriculum that was easily uh, accessible that you can learn from. We have people who are willing to help train you and accommodate you. Even if you can't teach or you think you're not capable of, uh, we can use people to help out in the classroom. And we have people who are been teaching for quite some time now, and frankly, they're getting burned out and they really need some help. So please consider stepping up and helping out as much as you can. We are continuing to accept your financial gifts, and they should be. It's up there. You can donate electronically there. There's the boxes and the envelopes. You can donate there. And remember also, we are have a painless fundraiser. If you shop online, as you do with the Christmas season coming up, uh, through Amazon, you go through the Amazon Smile program. You list. You, you don't have to pay anything extra. You don't have anything different or whatsoever. But if you list our church as the, the beneficiary of your uh, purchases. We will get a, a portion of those as a fundraiser and we don't have to pay any extra. So please consider that. We ask as always that you continue to pray for what's going on in this country, in Armenia, for our church and our pastor. And as always, we hope to see you next week. Uh, now let's all rise for the benediction. Now may we all submit to the indwelling Holy Spirit of peace, relish the love of our Father God, and always remember the hope we have in our resurrected and living Lord Jesus Christ. His grace and peace to us all. Amen. Amen.